Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Today we're going to look at an absolute classic bass line from a classic song, Good Vibrations by The Beach Boys. The bass line was conceived by Beach Boys genius Brian Wilson and played by the legendary Carol Kay. It's not a difficult bass line to play from a technical standpoint, but it's incredibly inventive in places and has a great groove in others. The two sections that we're going to focus on are the melodic verse lines and the walking chorus riff. As always, the lesson material is all there over at the Talking Bass website, so just click the link in the info below, and while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find over 500 free bass lessons on every topic imaginable. Then just sign up for the free membership to gain access to a ton of free practice resources and downloads as well as all the forums and chat groups. There are over 120,000 bass players all signed up in the Talking Bass community so go check it out. Okay so first things first. Carol Kay is an absolute legend in the world of bass. As part of the so-called Wrecking Crew, she played on hundreds if not thousands of hit records, movies and TV themes. If you want to be totally blown away, just check out the Polyphonic Channel video on Carol here on YouTube. The number of hits that she played on is ridiculous and I guarantee that you've heard her bass playing many, many times before. Carol's main bass on these sessions would have been a Fender Precision and she's well known for a muted pick tone. That trademark picked bass tone is often the giveaway as to whether you're listening to Carol Kay on 60s classic recordings. So today I'm using the Fender Precision 50s reissue strung with flat wounds, I'm playing with a pick and using a Nordy mute. I'm also rolling the tone knob back a little and using an Ampeg B15 amp sim. So, Good Vibrations is obviously a Beach Boys classic and a masterpiece arrangement. There are tempo changes and modulations all over the place, incredible vocal harmonies as you'd expect from the Beach Boys, there's a large number of orchestral instruments in there, and to top things off, there's even a theremin. But beyond all of that incredible arranging and musicianship, it's a beautiful song with an unforgettable melody. So let's have a listen to that opening line that sounds like this. Ah. I love the colorful clothes she wears And the way the sunlight plays upon her head So we're at 152 beats per minute and the first line sounds like this. So in terms of the notes, we start on the B flat here at the 15th fret of the G string and then we drop down to the E flat at the 13th fret of the D string and then we just jump back up to that B flat again. So. Then we come up in the scalar manner, E flat, F, G flat, 13th, 15th and 16th frets. Now even though the melody here is interesting as far as bass lines go, you know, we're up in that upper register playing that catchy melodic hook, it's the rhythm that's equally intriguing. For one thing, we don't come in on the beat, we enter on the and of one with that skip. So we have one, two, three, four, one. So it's one and two. So we're using a swing rhythm here as well. So we've got one and two and three and four and as opposed to one and two and three and four and. So one, one and two, three. Okay, so we're coming in on the and of one. Also, if we look at the main notes in that line, we're actually accenting on two and three in the first bar and then one and two in the second bar. So if we miss out the skips, we actually have one, two, three, four, one, two. So one, two, three, four, one, two. And that's the main feel there. So next we basically repeat that line rhythmically and we melodically descend through the chord progression. So let's just work through the notes. So we started with, then we move down to, so here we have the, a flat there at the uh, 13th fret of the G string, do uh, dropping down to the D flat at the 11th fret of the D string, then back up to that A flat, and then, so then we've got D flat, E flat, and F. Okay, so that's 11th, 13th, and 15th fret. So, it's pretty much the same as this, but we've dropped down a whole step, and instead of the minor third in there, we've got the major third. So instead of that, that little pattern of whole step, half step, we've got a whole step, whole step pattern, okay? That's the way to see this. So, and next we take that line, 
and move it down another whole step. Okay, so before we were starting at that 13th fret, now we start at the 11th fret of the G string. So, now we have... And then we just move down with that same line, down to the F at the 10th uh, fret of the G string. So we've got that same pattern there, just being moved down through the chord progression. So it's just a little word on the technique here, in the fretting hand on the first line, I'm using the third and first fingers there, so that's going to be the ring and index fingers first three notes and then when we come up I'm using first, third and fourth. Then on the next lines, again, we're using that third and first finger and then I come up first finger, second finger and fourth finger. Might be a little bit of a stretch there for you but don't worry about stretching, just move the hand. Just use little micro shifts as you move up. And then in the picking hand, I'm using alternate picking here. So I've got downstroke, upstroke, downstroke for that little skip. And then down, up, down for the ascending scale. And that's it. Now, as you work through these lines, you might be wondering why we're stretching up through those notes on the D string. Well, this is how Carol plays it. He definitely wrote out some neat lines on the bass, like for instance, I'd have never played that. Now, it's obviously a little easier to play the final note of each of those major lines on the G string like this. You know, that would be easier. But one of the great things about staying on the thicker D string is you're going to get a fatter tone. By moving up onto the G string, especially with a mute, the sound's going to be a little thinner. Now, I've not got any proof that this is why she did it, but it would make sense. Now, in terms of memorizing and understanding how this bass line works, it's important to understand the underlying chord progression, the harmony. So basically, we're in the key of E flat minor, and we're descending through the chords E flat minor, D flat major, C flat or B major, and B flat major. This is just a basic descent through the chords in a minor key. So we're going one, seven, six, and five. Now, the best way to memorize that is to actually just work through the arpeggios. So, you know, I'm not gonna spend too much time on explaining all of the arpeggios. I've got plenty of different lessons on that. But really, you can just work down through the arpeggios. So we'd have E flat minor, then we move down to D flat major, then down to B major, and then you could play B flat major. So you can play that anyway, you could play E flat minor up here, then. And as you actually play through those arpeggios that I've got there in the, uh, the on-screen tab and in the lesson material over at the website, you can, You can hear that chord progression moving, you can hear the tune in there. Now like I said, this is chords 1, 7, 6 and 5 in a minor key, but chord 5 has been altered to a major chord. Normally chord 5 in a minor key is minor, but here it's major, which means we're making use of the harmonic minor scale. So when you see major chords used as chord five in a minor key, here that uh, the B flat, that's the harmonic minor scale. And as for the chord progression, that one, seven, six, five movement, that descending line is incredibly common in minor keys and is sometimes referred to as the Andalusian cadence. And the cool thing about learning the arpeggios for that chord progression is that you'll be able to see those chord tones under your fingers and those patterns as you play the bass line. So, you can see that E flat minor arpeggio there and you can see, you can see that D flat major. So it's just outlining the chord, uh, the chord tones in there with a little bit, that little scale note to join up the root and the third. Now another cool thing about this bass line is that it starts on the fifth of the chord each time. So we have a skip down from the fifth to the root note, then back up to the fifth, and then we play up, 
up through those three scale notes from the root. The fifth of the chord, combined with the entry on the and of one, makes me wonder if this line is written like that to work better as a counter melody to the double bass. On the repeat of the line, the double bass plays the root note on beat one, which when combined with the bass guitar, gives us this. So we've got the, that low E flat. So E flat there, the low E flat on beat one. Okay, so the electric and double basses are working in combination to create one whole melody line and the entry on the upbeat for the electric helps give it more of a characteristic hook. So that's the first part of the verse and for the second half we just repeat everything that we just played but on the final bar we have a totally different line that sounds like this. So let's just work through the notes here. So we start with basically a B flat major arpeggio. So B flat, D and F, okay? So 13th fret on the A string and then 12th and 15th frets on the D string. Then we move up to this B natural here at the 16th fret of the G string. And then we come down B flat, A flat, G flat, F. So, so that's 15th and 13th frets on the uh, G string and then uh, 16th and 15th frets on the D string, so. For the technique in the fretting hand, I'm just using second finger, first finger, fourth finger for the start of the arpeggio. And then I just jump up with the fourth finger, the pinky, up to that uh, 16th fret there. And then I come down third finger, first finger, fourth finger, third finger. Then for the picking hand, you have a choice. You can either alternate all the way through, or you can just play downstrokes. Either way is fine. So rhythmically here, we've got something totally different in that it's straight quarter notes, but this helps to set up the walking line in the next section, which you'll have heard before. So we're matching that rhythm, and it also gives us a contrasting build-up. Now in the harmony, we have a B-flat chord, as before, but the second bar features a D flat major, which is called five of G flat. The next bar switches to the key of G flat. So this D flat is what we call a pivot chord. It's a chord common to both keys that we can use for a smooth modulation and transition. It just so happens that E flat minor, our starting key, is the relative minor of G flat major, where we're going. So we're switching to a closely related key. So everything about this move is nice and smooth. Now I did just mention that the final chord is D flat, but if we look at the bass line, we don't actually outline that chord at all. We start on the B flat and we work down in scale order B flat, A flat, G flat, F over that D flat chord. We're starting on the sixth of the chord and coming down through the fifth, fourth, and third. So the F there, the third of the D flat chord, works great in leading into the next G flat in the next bar. So really this line is all focused on that note there, the F moving in. So we're just leading into that. And you could also see all of that move as just actually being an expansion on that B flat chord, you know, in the previous bar. We're pretty much hanging around on that B flat while the D flat works in the underlying harmony. So in terms of practice, you can just play the line away from the original recording, but be sure to keep time with that foot and focus on the correct rhythmic entry. So we're gonna have three, four, one. Once you have the notes under your fingers, you could try playing it to a metronome at a slow tempo and then build up speed. So here's the whole verse at the original 152 beats per minute. A one, two, three, four, one. Now let's quickly move into the famous chorus bass line. This one is going to be much quicker to break down and it sounds like this. I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me the excitations. I'm backing up good vibrations. She's giving me the excitations. Good, I'm good, I'm good, good vibrations. She's giving me So 
we're playing straight quarter notes, making this a proper walking bass line, and strangely, it's played slightly slower than the verse. The verse is pretty much 152 beats per minute, and the chorus is closer to 150. And you'll find these kind of odd time changes uh, throughout the song, and they add a really distinctive feel to the whole thing. Some of the later tempo changes are really, really obvious, but the verse to chorus one is a lot more subtle. So we're in the key of G flat major here, and we start on a G flat, second fret of the E string, then jump up to the octave there, fourth fret of the, uh, of the D string. Then we come down through F flat, Yes, it's an F flat, even though you can see it as a E natural. Uh, but remember, it's an F flat because it's the flattened seventh in G flat. So the seventh is going to be an F of some kind, hence the F flat. So you can see it as an E if you want to. So second fret of the uh, D string and then down to the E flat at the first fret. So then we come down. So we've just got G flat, A flat, B and then, uh, or C flat it actually is, and uh, and D flat. So, so second, fourth fret on the E string, second and fourth fret on the uh, on the A string. So, who'd have thought that such a simple bass line would have an F flat and a C flat in it? So technique wise, fretting hands, first finger, fourth finger for the octave, and then we've got second finger and first finger for the uh, two notes coming down. And then you can use the second finger to drop back down to the G flat and come up with the fourth finger and then first finger, fourth finger. So. And that's it. And for the picking hand, you can just use downstrokes for the whole thing. Um, also, when you move up for the octave there on the G flat, you probably want to bring your palm into play on the picking hand to mute that off. Yes, we've got the uh, the mute working there, which is going to cut it short anyway, but just to make it a little bit cleaner as you move, you can bring the heel of the hand there onto the E string as you jump up. And it just takes, you know, mutes it completely. So we play this four times, then the whole thing shifts up in key by a whole step to A flat. So we just take that whole pattern and we just move it up to this A flat at the fourth fret of the E string. Which you play twice. And then you move up a whole step again to B flat at the sixth fret of the E string. Pl again, play twice. So we've actually moved key actually modulated three times in one chorus. Now as one little note on the harmony here, you'll notice that even though I'm referring to the keys of G flat, A flat and B flat, we have a flattened seventh degree in there which gives us a nice bluesy sound. So that flat seven. This means that we're using more of a mixolydian modality rather than a conventional major key. But don't worry too much about the theory behind it. You can just see it as a major key with a flattened seventh, you know, just for the vibe, you know, that's it. So if you, if you take a G flat major scale there, just take that, that F there, the seventh degree, flatten it to the F flat. That's what we're using here. Same on the A flat. Mixolydian. So again, get the notes under your fingers away from the original and then you can practice building up speed to a metronome if you need it. So here's the whole chorus at 150 beats per minute. A one, two, three, four. That's the verse and chorus for good vibrations. There are a few more sections to learn, but they're just single root notes for much of it. In this lesson, I specifically wanted to give some insight into how Brian Wilson and Carol Kay concocted such a fantastic melodic line by way of interesting chord outline, outlining those chord tones, and rhythmic skips. So please like this video, subscribe to the channel for weekly videos like this, and leave a comment to let me know what other great bass players and lines you'd like me to break down. Remember, the lesson material is all there over at Talking Bass, so check out the link in the info below and I'll see you next week.